let's go to second corinthians chapter 1 and verse 8. actually let's just go verse 9. second corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 yes we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead turn to your neighbor say your God raises the dead who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us we had sentence of death served to us Paul is saying and he said we learned when we got this sentence we learned not to trust in ourselves he said we had to learn to trust in God and we happen to have a God in whom we trust and this God has a specialty because the man's biggest enemy longest enemy and the strongest enemy is not drugs it's not governments it's not politicians it's death and God that we trust apostle Paul says when we got served a sentence by death he said this God he raises the dead and this God he delivered us in the past Paul is saying he's delivering us now oh and we also trust he will deliver us in the future I want to speak today briefly on the topic called deliverance as a lifestyle deliverance as a lifestyle sentence of death sometimes we go through life and things get served to us by life sometimes it's generational curses they get served we get served by generational curse a certain sentence means that's how your life is going to be a statistic says if your father was an alcoholic you are 10 times likely to be an alcoholic than a person whose father was not an alcoholic and this statistic can also slip into every area of our life maybe generational curses served us a sentence and maybe a sickness serves us a sentence maybe a financial problem or a relational problem serves us a sentence and there could be all kinds of problems when they serve us a sentence and when a sentence is served means it seems like it's over and apostle Paul teaches us here he says that actually in that moment something happens to you you lose something you lose trust in yourself which is not a bad thing you get that thing shaken off of you and most people when they lose trust in themselves they have no one else to turn to and so they turn to the bottle some turn to the club others they turn into sex and some just simply you know hang the rope and they just end their life but apostle Paul says when the bottom falls off of my feet when life has dealt me the worst when I've been cheated on betrayed and stoned when I've been abandoned and shipwrecked when maybe you've been served a sentence even by the doctor that you have a sickness and it's incurable maybe you got served by a lawyer that your family is falling apart or maybe your child has served you a sentence and says I don't want to have nothing a part of this family and your bottom is falling off at that moment Paul says we still have a rock of ages that we fall back on when your bottom falls off and you feel like you're falling down I'm gonna tell you where you're gonna fall down if you're a Christian to a rock bottom there's always a rock at the bottom of every Christian and that rock is not a nightclub it's not a drug it's not a marijuana it's not a bottle it's the promise of God and Paul says I land on that promise in the God who raises the dead he said I trust in him to deliver me and I want to encourage every person this more this evening is that your God he's not a Santa Claus he's a boss he ruined every funeral including his own he messes things up people already prepared a burial until he came and messed the whole thing up 
and when he came into the room and the worst situation which is death and he looks at the something that you call impossible and he said this girl or that particular Lazarus he is not dead he is sleeping and the Bible says people ridiculed him people mocked him they said what are you saying this is insane to God your biggest challenge God wanted to show to you how small it is to him how hard it is for you to wake up a baby actually you have to work hard not to wake up a baby God has to work hard not to slip in blessings unrequested for God the worst situation is as easy as waking up a baby you didn't see Jesus sweat when he raised a girl from the dead. He took her by the hand and he said her name. He says rise up. That's exactly what you do when you raise up a baby when she's sleeping. You take them by the hand and says hey come on it's gotta you gotta wake up and that's exactly how Jesus treats most difficult and most challenging situation. Your God raises the dead. What you call impossible he has a different definition for impossible. His definition for impossible is I am possible. I can do anything. Seems like we have a different definition of freedom with David. Because David's definition of freedom is he tells Saul I'm gonna go and show myself in front of a Goliath. Goliath is not bothering you. Is he tormenting your family? David? Has he thrown a stone in your face? Has he punched you? Has he hurt you David? No he hasn't done anything. Why are you picking a fight with a man twice your size? And David says it's simple. How can God deliver me if I don't pick a fight? He says I will go pick a fight and God will deliver me. Don't expect a deliverance if you refuse to fight. Don't expect a deliverance if you're sitting on blessed assurance Jesus is mine and I'm not going to do anything else. We cannot expect God to move his throne if we can't move our pinky. And we have this attitude, this passive attitude in Christians today. What is this? You know if God wants it, God will do it. Apostle Paul tells Timothy, fight a fight according to the prophecies given to you. I read that and I say, Paul, God said it, God settles it. If God prophesied, don't do anything. It's going to get done. God doesn't need your help, preacher said. Well Apostle Paul didn't hear that preacher because Apostle Paul tells Timothy if God said it nothing's gonna happen until you move, until you fight with it. God gave all the promised land to Israel but they only got as much as they fought, not as much as God gave them. Like we heard a testimony today, God gave all the blessings on the cross but you only get not what you wish to have what you fight to have. When you throw yourself in a battle bigger than you, you give room for a God who raises the dead to step in. But if you're waiting for every prophetic word, for every seven green lights to be on your way to work, for the proper verse, for the proper sermon and the proper song, for everything to line up and then you have the courage to step against the Goliath. My friend, that day might never come. You have to launch an attack and say, God will deliver me if I throw myself in something bigger than I am. Can somebody say amen? Most of the healings Jesus did, they didn't happen in the hospital. There were hospitals. Why didn't Jesus go to the hospitals and heal sick people? People always say, well if he is such a healer, if God used him to heal people, let him go to the hospitals and just heal everybody out of the hospitals. The Lord Jesus didn't do that. Who did Jesus heal? People who threw themselves when he was eating, interrupted his lunch. When he was walking and they broke every protocol, they said you're unclean, you can't touch clean people and they shattered that and they threw themselves in the places they could have get stoned for and that's when God met them. Very few cases where Jesus almost an accident stepped in but most of the cases somebody did the fighting and Jesus came as a result of it. God is not gonna show up to your battle if you run from it. You can't send God to fight the Goliath if you're hiding behind the bushes and snapchatting. 
You gotta put the phone down, pick up a sword, go against the Goliath. You're scared to death, your heart is sinking, going into your feet and you say, God, if you don't show up, pooping in my pants is gonna be the least of my worries. I'm gonna die in this battle. And that's when you really, your faith is stretched. You know, guys, sometimes a pornography issue. And I, and I ask him, you know, what have you, what have you done? Well, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm just really, really praying that God will, God will help me. If, if David would have listened to that, he would have been embarrassed. Sometimes we have, you know, generational curses. I, I just, I came to prayer line once. That's great that you came to the prayer line. That is awesome. The question I have for you today, are you throwing yourself in the battle bigger than you? Trusting God to deliver you. Or are you waiting for God to do the deliverance so you don't have to do the fighting? You're more than a slave. You carry a DNA of God. You carry an image and likeness of God. Lions make lions. Eagles make eagles. God made us in His image. Never lost the battle. And He loves war. He is a man of the Bible. So he trains my hands for battle. He trains my fingers for war. God creates you. He finds pleasure in seeing his child rise up from the diapers and take their position and take against the enemy. Jesus didn't just give us salvation. He gave us authority. Rise up. Can somebody say amen? I want you to write down the third thought. When we don't fight our enemy, we end up hurting our friends. You know David eventually throws himself into the battle and he conquers the Goliath. God shows his grace. God delivers him. But again this deliverance didn't happen because David was sprayed with the anointing water. This deliverance happened. David threw himself in a battle and for some people even to come for prayer with the anointing water actually is throwing themselves into the battle. They, they feel like you know what there's so many people watching. It takes a lot to overcome for them. But for most of us, you know, praying in our own time, fasting, doing whatever we can to, to bring ourselves in that place where we say, God, I position myself in that place. And David was a warrior all of his life. But toward later part of his life, David felt like, I am creating my own excuse, my, my own version now. I think David felt like, you know what, I have achieved enough victory. My family is safe. I got a lot of money. I got all the things that I wanted. I don't need to fight no more. I know God called me to fight. I know God has chosen me to fight. Not just for myself but also for my people. But my people are doing just fine. I mean some of them are still suffering but everybody overall is doing fine. I'm not gonna go to the battle. I'm not gonna go fight the battle I am anointed to win. I'm gonna stay home and chill. So David stayed home and chilled. And it's interesting as he avoided a battle God anointed him to win. He unknowingly got into a battle where he had no anointing to overcome already. A battle with lust. A battle with things that are so contrary to David's nature. David protected a man who wanted to kill him and now David is tempted to kill a man who protects him. David is in the battle in his own house because he's afraid, because he's lazy, because he comes up with excuses, because he's already good enough, because it's already awesome, everything is fine, I don't need to fight no more, I'm not gonna go to the battle, God anointed me and called me, I'm gonna stay home and chill and finds a battle comes to his own bedroom, a battle he has no power to overcome and he falls in that battle like a slave and that battle cripples his whole family child one by one begin to rebel against him and begin to die. It unleashes a generational curse. When you come to a point when your life gets somewhat okay, when you come to a point when bills are paid, you're comfortable with coming to church and you're like you know what this is a good place to be in. It's also the most dangerous place to be in. Because when you and I think that God just gives us that power to fight for ourselves instead of just fighting for our city and we begin to settle and we say this whole fighting, this whole demon thing that's for the crazy churches. And so what we do is we settle and the battle creeps into our own bedroom except the battle we have no power over. If there is one drug addict in Tri-Cities you have to fight. 
If there is one sick person in the ER, you and I have a fight. If there is one person slipping into eternity tonight, you and I have a fight. If there is one girl holding a razor to her veins, you and I are in a war. It might not be your sister, it might not be your mother, it might not be your stepsister. But listen, it is someone God called you, anointed you to fight. And when you say, no, no, no Vlad, I'm too busy, I got college, this is not for me, this is what happens. You will not avoid the fight. You'll just be in one, you will not win. Today I just want to challenge every person. Don't ever allow in your mind a thought to get comfortable in life. We get comfortable when we breathe our last. As long as you are on this earth, even when you are on a vacation, even when you are resting in the presence of God, you are a soldier. Have your boots on, your sword on, always ready because you are in a battle. A hundred thousand people in tri-cities are non-religious. You are in a battle. And just because you know our church has grown, just because our influence has grown, that means nothing for us. It only to challenge and push us to run faster, better and be more passionate than ever before for our generation. Can somebody say Amen. When you don't fight your real enemy, you start fighting your friends. When David didn't want to fight Philistines, he ended up fighting Uriah. When you don't fight demons, when you don't do spiritual warfare, you start fighting your husband for all the mistakes he does. You begin to fight your children, you begin to fight your wife, your boss, politicians. You... There's one thing we have to remember, we'll never stop fighting. We only choose which battles we fight. We don't choose if we fight. Ask Cain and he will tell you. When the battle came to his door, the battle of rage and jealousy. And God comes to Cain and says, Cain, take care of this. Cain, your son of Adam. Cain, rule over it. Cain, this is your battle. But Cain, for reasons unknown to us, he let it go. He didn't fight that battle. Instead, he took a rock and killed his own brother. What if he would have taken a rock and killed that jealousy? What if he would have taken a rock and brought down that Goliath? No. And see he said I'm not gonna fight this battle. Instead the fighting spirit has to find an expression. He found a rock and brought his brother down. We see so many marriages killed by spouses, by children, by people who use their rocks not to bring down their Goliaths but they throw their rocks to destroy their families. Oh no, they don't mean to destroy their families. They're trying to fix their families. But they destroy them. If they don't fix them first in the spiritual world where the real enemy is. Your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, no matter how much pain they caused you, they're not your real enemy. And Satan's trick is to have you use a rock to beat them because he will go undetected. He's afraid that you will love them and throw the rock in his face. But today I want to ask you, you only have one rock and you only have one. You're going to throw it at someone. Who is it going to be? Abel or Goliath? If you bring down Goliath, you can change your family. You can change your health. You can change your relationships. You can change your finances. You can change your whole family history if you bring down the Goliath. But if you use these stones and you say, well, this whole rebuking devil, they pray at the end together against the devil. So much devil and devil and devil. Well, that's exactly what you do in your own house. Except we rebuke the devil, but you're doing it to people that you should have been loving. I want every anger you got inside of you against any family member to be turned against the real enemy. That's why we allow that when we pray. But most of us, we are like this very sanctified Presbyterian. But when we leave, somebody cut us off on the highway. Whew. Anything that these people do here, this makes us look like choir boys. Because that comes out. 
that anger and that passion comes out why because you are a fighter just fighting a wrong battle and I'm just asking you please fight a battle that actually worth fighting so that you don't have to fight your friends don't kill you Uriah Uriah is not your enemy Goliath is your enemy drugs is your enemy the demons are your enemy generational curses are your enemy the poverty is your enemy cancer is your enemy can somebody say amen let's rise to our feet well, let us let us rise to our feet